This is what a user's timesheet looks like. When an individual logs into BigTime, they jump right into their timesheet, and there's a menu along the top that lets them see the engagements or tasks that are assigned to them and some basic reports. So BigTime acts as this comprehensive system for labor management that sits in the middle of your user and your accounting system. The core of this conversation is the timesheet that we're looking at. You can track time using the weekly view, daily view, or by using the timers. But I'll go through the weekly timesheet and give you a feel for what the others look like. All of the time information on this page feeds into things like budgets, labor codes, and your list of projects. At this point, you've trained your employee as part of your compliance process on managing the zones on this timesheet. So you've either given them a document, walk them through this process, maybe a video, anything that tells them what they're responsible for. As an employee, I'm allowed to enter time on 9.17 because today is Thursday. But that's the only period which your compliant process allows them to track time. So if I come into Thursday for this labor code and I type in three hours and I put in a note, I can click save and it'll save the information into the system. I can come down to field inspection and put in two hours here another note. Ideally, they'd be doing this throughout the day. That's what the auditor would expect. But as long as it's filled out by the end of the day, then you're within the expectation that you're tracking time daily. Some people prefer to track time every hour. We have people who like to review it at noon and then again at five. Your procedure will vary depending on what works best for you. But as long as it's done by midnight in the user's time zone, then you can fulfill the requirement for tracking time daily. And behind the scenes, we're keeping track of the fact that on this timesheet, the time entry was created today. What's interesting about this whole process is that when we look back at Big Time IQ in general and just take the current year, less than 5% of the entries that get created in the system are modified by the user once they're created. Once a user puts their time in there, they tend to be done with it. But it's that 5% that'll kill you. Then the other piece of that puzzle that's difficult for DCAA is more than 40% of the time, so a huge portion of the time, is entered not the same day that the time was worked. But the auditor is right. The closer you get to the day of work, the more accurate the time is. We define quote unquote accurate as a time that's logged and eventually billed through to the customer, as opposed to logged and then eventually written down or written off. We go back historically and look at time the closer it is to the date of entry, the more likely it is to be billed. So the audit standard is not without merit. As a user, these five hours are great, but I've got Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday here to worry about as well. If I go into Wednesday and I hadn't logged that time, but I still spent two and a half hours that day, you can see that the system pops up right away with a daily audit note saying, your company audit log rules require you to add an explanation for any changes you make to these hours. What we're doing is trying to enforce this comment. Now the comment is not strictly necessary as part of your audit standard. The only reason we're entering a comment is because if a change like this is made, and also if you have an auditor, the first question they're going to ask is why. So you want to make sure that as an employee, you're A, explaining why, and B, the second question that the auditor is going to ask is, did the manager know that? So we have to know that. We want to make sure that we're feeding not only the audit log to the manager, but also the user's notes as to why they made those changes. They get a notice when they go and review and approve the timesheets. So now there's a process in place for a user to enter their time. We encourage submitting time weekly because that gives you a nice succinct unit of measure. You can change that so that the submission is for whenever your payroll period is. Whatever that process period is, you'll put a policy in place that says, for example, an employee's time is entered every day and by Friday five o'clock, you have to click the submit button. We have two views for time, a daily and a weekly view. And in the weekly view, you can flip from week to week. If a user tries to log time ahead, that's a big no-no. So even if I enter a note into that space, big time is going to say, Based on the DCAA audit rules, you're not allowed to log time ahead for billable or direct labor. I can log time ahead for things like vacation or conferences, but I can't log time ahead for direct labor. Again, if I'm outside of today, I have to put in a note as to why. But in this case, we've disallowed the ability to log time ahead for direct labor. 
there's a different view for the same timesheet. We've been looking at the weekly view, but we want to see the day to day. So we can see what I have done for Thursday, make sure I have the right hours and the right notes, etc. If the individual user has a small number of items they work on every day, the weekly timesheet's awesome, especially if those repeat over the course of many weeks. If they're all over the map like accountants who might work on 250 different things in a week because they do so many different companies' tax returns, then this daily view is a lot more comprehensive. You can basically use whichever you want because they're both compatible. People switch back and forth all the time, so if I want to get a more detailed view of a particular day, I can flip into that day and see it. So all of these rules get applied here at the daily timesheet and offline on the web timesheet as well. I'm allowed to enter today, I'm allowed to enter with an audit log before today, and I'm not allowed to enter or log time ahead if it's a direct labor, job or project. I'm going to log in here as an administrative user. So you can see it's the same company, it's a DCAA compliant company. So if I go into the timesheets here, I can actually go down and choose that user that I just logged in for and I can see the time that they've entered here. So that's the user's timesheet from an administrative perspective.